2017 has come. It's another new year, and uh, we keep hearing new year resolution from people, right? A lot of people are making new year resolution, new plans and new possibilities and what they want to accomplish. And we keep getting prophetic word, we keep getting prophetic word concerning the year 2017 and the month. And some of us are so optimistic about this new year. And then some of us are, mm, it's gonna be the same story. If nothing really has changed, it's just another day. Amen. And so a lot of us, there are people, because of the experience of the past, they are a bit pessimistic about anything new happening. What is so new about the year? Amen. Is this snowed like it snowed the year before or yesterday? So it's just another day. Um, but to some who have encountered the grace and the mercy of God, and there's so much optimism, there's something inside of you, you've been waiting for this year. Year. You've been waiting for this day, and you've been putting everything and so many things on hold and said, By I'm just waiting for 2017, and everything is going to change. Somehow you just believe it. Amen. Amen. And the Bible said, the earnest expectations of the righteous will not be cut off. What you hope for, what you believe is possible. The Bible says everything is possible to them that believe it. Amen. And so he said, life and death is in the power of the tongue. What you believe, you you become. Amen. And so if you believe that this next 12 months is a new beginning for you, then it shall be so for you. And if you believe that it's still going to be same old, same old, then it's still going to be same old, same old. As a man thinketh in his heart, so he is. Amen. And so it's all about your perception, what you perceive, what your expectations are. But this morning, I just want to share with us, I want to give you something. It's not, more, it's not so much as a prophetic word, but one of the words for those of us who have the Christmas letter, I always tell you, go back to those letter. I prayerfully believe God for words. And uh, not so much as prediction or prophecy, but I believe that as we begin to read the heart of the Holy Spirit in relation to us as a congregation, as a community of people, and then God begins to give us a train of thought and say, okay, this is what we expect, this is what we're going to get. Amen. And so I expect freedom for every one of us. But one thing that I believe this year is that God wants to make us participant, not spectators. Amen. God wants you to be participant, to participate in the move of the Holy Spirit, not be a spectator. God does not want you and me to be news anchor or reporters. God wants you and me to be news makers. We should be the headliners. Amen. Is somebody listening to me? God wants you and me to be the headliners this year, not the ones reporting other people's miracle. Amen. Have you heard? Did you hear what just happened? Did you hear? Did you see? It? Have you seen him? Oh, did you hear? They just bought a new house. Did you hear? Oh, they just moved. Oh, no, God, you, you are not the one to be the news anchor for the people. Amen. God wants you and me to be news makers. You are the one to be the headliner. When they are reporting good things, this year is going to be you. They're going to be talking about you. This is what God wants you and me to be part of. God wants us to be part of what is happening. Amen. And how do we become part of that? That is what I want to give to you briefly this morning. As you begin to prepare yourself, position yourself to become what? Full participant in the divine inheritance of the kingdom. That is the mind of God for you. Second Peter chapter 1, quickly. I want you to write this down if you can today. And I believe that whatever I'm going to share with us briefly today, and wherever we stop, is going to be the foundation of the years to come. Not just this next 12 months. I believe that the, the subsequent years in your life, as you begin to build on this foundation, I believe that your life and my life will not remain the same. Uh, I read Second Peter chapter 1 from verse 1 to 10. Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ, grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of our Lord Jesus. 
according as his divine power, verse 3, had given unto us all things that pertains unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that had called us to glory and to virtue. His divine power, I want to pause there for a little bit because I just want to emphasize what we're going to do this year. He said his divine power has given us everything, not some things. This is talking about participating. His divine power has given us everything that pertains to life and godliness. Life in relation to your everyday living. Life in relation to the food on your table. Life in relation to the clothes on your back. Life in relation to your healing, healing in your mortal body. Life in relation to a happy marriage and a, a, a stress-free home. Life in relation to everything that has to do with your everyday living. He has given you everything that pertains unto life. Everything that will make your living an easy one. And then godliness in relation to God. The ability to live holy and righteous before him. To be free from sin and the compromise of this word. He said this is why, he, this is what he's given us. Through the knowledge of him. And so knowledge is power. Amen. Verse 4. It said whereby are given unto us a sudden great and precious promises Hallelujah. great and precious promises that by these you might become what? partakers participant by the promises the promises in the word of God sometimes technology is crazy I can't lift up that iPad and say this is the word of God <laughs> amen but what are the promises here? The promises, all the promises here are given so that you can become what? Partakers of what? Of his what? Divine nature. Having escaped the corruption that is in this world through lust. And beside this, giving all diligence to add to your faith virtue and to virtue knowledge and to knowledge temperance and to temperance patience and to patience godliness and to godliness brotherly kindness and to brotherly kindness charity yeah. verse 8 if you possess all those things if all these things for if these things be in you and are bound they will make they Make that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus. Verse 9 says, But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off, and have forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Wherefore, rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure, for if you do these things, you will never fall. So God wants you and me to participate in the what? Divine nature. This is the mind of God that in the year 2017 and beyond, that we will lay hold of the promises of God. We will lay hold of the power of God that will make us to become what? Full participant in the nature of God, not spectators. We talk about other people. And that will become, you know, what happened to spectators? Spectators later become skeptics. Amen. You see how it works. If I'm only a spectator, I become what a skeptic. Because, oh, uh, is that thing true? Does it really happen? Are you really sure? The way I'm looking at that, it's not really possible. Right? Because I'm a spectator. I have not given myself over to accepting the promises of God and laying hold of it and running with it, making every effort. The NIV say, make every effort to add to your faith. Those things that will make you participate in the divine nature of God. That is the mind of God. The mind of God for you and for me is that we become full participant. 
not spectators. And that has been ringing in my spirit for weeks now. Now, this is the heart of God. Before we continue any further, a second scripture, because we cannot speak outside the word of God. I don't want to give you enticing words of men's wisdom. I don't want to speak positive word. I want to speak the mind of Christ through his promises. Colossians chapter 1, verse 12 to 14. I want you to see something there. He said, giving thanks to the Father, which has made us meet to be what? Can you say the word there? Can we all read that together from the beginning? Okay, stop there. Giving thanks, we started this morning with what? Giving thanks. To who? To the Father. And why were we thanking him? Maybe we didn't know that. Who has made us meet? One translation said, who has qualified us? I like that. Not out of our own good works. Because of what Jesus did on the cross over 2,000 years ago. Because he was born as a baby, he became a man, died on the cross. This is why we celebrate Christmas. This is why we celebrate Easter. Because what? That is what qualifies you and me to become what? Participant. To partake in the inheritance of the saints. The inheritance of the saints. For he had delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us, transported us. He's taking us from one point where we were what? Spectators. You see the translation? He took you and me from being spectators to what? To becoming participant in the kingdom of his dear son, whom he what? In whom we have what redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of our sins. This is why we are here this morning. It's that knowledge that breaks you free from mediocrity. It is this understanding that stops you from being what? A spectator. And I, I, I don't want to be a spectator this year. From this day forward, I don't want to just sit down and just be becoming a, a, a skeptic because I've looked and it's not happening because I have not laid hold of the precious promises of God. I've not laid hold of this promise because mental agreement with God's word is not enough. You know what I mean? We can know it. There are people who know the Bible more than you and I. There are people who can teach this Bible eloquently, but they lack the power. The Bible says they have a form of godliness, but they deny the power thereof. They have a mental knowledge of the word of God. Mental knowledge of the word of God is not enough to participate in that divine inheritance that he's talking about. God wants you and me to be participant this year. It's not enough to know the word. We, it's, more than, it's not enough to just know the word. We need to know the man behind the word, the power behind the word. Daniel said, when wicked men begins to do wickedly in the land, those who know their God will be strong and do exploit. It is in the knowing of the man behind the promise that authenticate the power of the promise and that is what activates the, power, the promise from becoming active in your life and in my life. God is not a liar. The Bible says he's not a man to lie, neither he said the son of man to change his mind. What he say he will do, he will do. But I need to know that. I need to believe that. I need to yield myself to the man behind the promise. I need to yield myself to God for his word and his promise to become active and effective in my life. That's why in 2 Peter, where we read, he said, if you possess this knowledge in an increasing measure, it will stop you from being what ineffective and unproductive in the knowledge of him. In the NIV translation has that to say. And so for you and me to be effective this year, 
We must yield ourselves to the God of the Bible. Amen. And to yield simply means to give up possession, your right, to give up your claim, to surrender or to relinquish physical control to another. Are you willing to relinquish your right to God? Are you willing to surrender everything that has to do with you? Or are you willing to surrender? You're willing to surrender your children, but you're not willing to surrender your marriage. You're willing to surrender your marriage, but you're not willing to surrender your finances. You're willing to surrender this part of your life, but you're not willing to surrender this one. There are places, there are areas of your life that is a no-go area for God. You know what I mean? God, you can come in here, but you can't come here. You know, it's just like you have some rooms, some, some, some places in the house that the kids are not allowed to go. It's not only the kids we don't allow to touch things in the house. There are places too we don't even want God to go there too. This is off limit for you. Amen. And we want to experience the promises of God. It's not possible. We must be willing to yield completely, to surrender, to hand over willingly our right to God. The right to ourselves. And this is what the Bible talks, to surrender out, to submit completely to God. And this is where we will see the glory of God be made manifest in our lives. Jesus said, it's no longer my will, but your will be done in my life. Jesus speaking, he said, if any man must follow me, what will happen? He must what? Pick up his cross and follow me. Now that is to say, you must willingly give up your right to willingly give up something or to be coerced. If I manipulate you into giving up something, you've not really given it up. Yeah. Amen. If I talk you into doing something, you've really not done it because you were talked into it. How many times have we, we woke up one morning and said, why did I do that? It's as if something was just covering my head. I did, you know, what was I thinking? You know, I was deceived into doing that. Right? But, and that is why we must come to a point in our lives, and, and I was saying this the other day, I said, there are things that you don't even need to start beating your head over in the church. Because if people want to do it, they will do it. You can talk until you're blue in the face. If it's not in my heart to do it, I'm not going to do it. If you manipulate me through threat or any other thing to do it, I'm not doing it willingly. And that is why I'm not experiencing the blessings that comes with that obedience. Obedience is the highest form of praise you can offer to God. So we must be willing. The Bible says if you are willing and obedient. But we want people to be obedient without being willing. But the first thing before obedience is willingness. You say if you be willing and obedient. But we turn it around and say obey. No, 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 no. B b obedience that is coerced. It's witchcraft. And God doesn't want that. And so God wants you and me to willingly yield our souls to him. So that we can now, the reason why God wants you to willingly give up your right. So that you can pick up his right. So that you can now become what? Full participant in the divine nature of God. God wants you to begin to walk in that glory. The Bible says he had called us to what? To glory and to virtue. What is that? The Bible talks about the glory there in Second Peter chapter 1. Is the same word in Romans when the Bible says all has seen and fallen was short of the glory of God. God. Now the glory there is not the Shekinah glory that appeared in the tabernacle when Moses went in. It's not the smoke. It is not that. The glory there is talking about nature. The nature of God. The natural nature of God that was in, in born in you the day God breathed into a man. The Bible says in the book of Genesis chapter 1 and it says and God breathed into man and the man what became what? A living soul. So the Bible now turned around in Ezekiel, he said, the soul that sinned shall die. So when God bred into man, the nature of God came into man. 
It was that nature that was contaminated in disobedience in the Garden of Eden. And so when we fall short of the glory of God, we fall short of that nature of God. So Peter now, who had that understanding, came, he said he had called us through knowledge, so that through his glory and virtue, so that we can now begin to reclaim our divine inheritance and nature, so that we can become the glory of God on earth here. He wants us to walk in that nature so that when they see you, they see God. Not because, not because you are God. That is wrong. Amen. But they will see the nature, the quality, and the attribute of God in you. The reason why the Bible said that Christians, they were first called Christians in Antioch, was because what, what is a Christian? A man or a woman who has a Christ-like nature and character. A Christian is not because you came to church every Sunday. Or it's not because you have an English name that came from the Bible. You're not a Christian because all your parents, you've been going to church all your life. That doesn't cut it. That is not what makes you a Christian. That's why we have a lot of garbage going around today. Everybody says, oh, are you a Christian or this or that? I'm a Christian because my parents go to to a church, right? I was born in a church. I was uh, baptized and... uh, Confirm and confuse in the church, and so I'm a Christian. No, 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 no. A Christian is a man or a woman who has the nature of Christ. <laughs> that is Christ like. The Bible said when they saw them, they said, Those guys, they look like that Jesus that we, we heard about. They act, they talk, they behave. They relate to things. They respond to things like that Jesus. And so they call them what? Christians. Christ-like nature being manifested. The divine nature was being reflected through them. They become a reflection of Christ. And this is what God is calling you and me to in the year 2017. That we become what? A reflection of Christ. In our marriage, in the way we conduct our business, in the way we relate with our neighbor, in the way we relate with our children, in the way we relate with the people who don't know God, so that when they see us, they will say, there's something different about you. I can't really place my finger on it. It's not because you quoted John 3, 16. (laughs) Amen. It's because of the way you conduct yourself, because of the spirit of God that is inside of you. That is what God wants us to do. Right? Romans chapter 6 verse 13 say, Neither yield yourself anymore to unrighteousness. Don't yield yourself, but yield yourself unto God. So quickly here, I want you to write five things that you will need to do this year to build you up, to become, that will help you and me to begin to participate in the divine nature of God. Number one, uh, you can write it down. One is perseverance. And I'll explain them briefly. And second is persistence. Third one is prolong. Fourth, profound. And number five, prayer. Right? I'll say it again if you want to write it down. And I'm going to mention it. I'm going to discuss. I'm going to take one point each and just briefly because uh, I know a lot of us need to go and do some things this afternoon. Number one, for you to, one of the foundations that you need to lay that will help you to begin to participate. We're talking about what? Participation and not what? (laughs) You guys are sleeping now. What? You guys are not, uh, what kind of students do I have here this morning? <laughs> we got what? So that we can become what? Participators and not what? Spectators this year. And so then I came up with five P's that will help you to participate, to become what? A participant, to become what? A headliner. Because the apostles of old, what made them Christians? Uh, everywhere they went, they were what? Headliners. They were newsmakers. They said, these people that have turned the city upside down, they have come. So you are supposed to be a city shaker. Yeah. <laughs> right. This is who we are. 
This is what God wants you and me to do this year. Yes. And so one of the things that I found that, that will help me to become full participant in the divine nature of God, number one is that I must be persistent. And one of the things, how I got that was this morning, listening to, while we were getting ready for the new year, listening to some of this, the children that were here this early hours of this morning. And when I asked them about prayer, about what miracle is, and as I was listening to them, and this is something with me, I listen a lot. Even though as a pastor I talk a lot, but I listen a lot. <laughs> I hear people, and I can multitask, and I hear. And as those kids were talking yesterday, I was listening, I was hearing something different from each and every one of them. And from every answer that those kids gave me, yes, this early hours of this morning. And as I was preparing and praying for this morning, and then the Holy Spirit began to remind me, and I began to pick all the nuggets and say, this is what it is. This is what they were saying. This is what it is. This is what I heard from them. Maybe you hear something different. This is what I heard. And the first thing I heard that I picked from those kids this morning was persistence. What is persistence? Is the quality the, is the quality that allows someone to continue doing something, or try to do something even though it is difficult or opposed by other people. So is this persistence we're talking about that as I heard them yesterday, this morning, was different from the average word persistence. Is the quality, the ability to keep on doing something even though it is difficult. And they said, that is how miracle, these were children telling us by the Holy Spirit yesterday, this is how I interpreted their word. And this is how miracle is given. This is how we encounter miracle. When we continue, when we refuse to give up, even though it is difficult, even though we are not getting the result now, right? In the sake of, you know, to continue to do something, even though it is difficult, or opposed by other people. You may face opposition this year, but don't give up. You may face discouragement this year, but don't give up. You may face disappointment this year, but don't give up. Things may be difficult when you start believing, but don't give up. Persistence is what will make you become one participant. That is what makes you a headliner. When you stop when you refuse to stop, when you refuse to give up. I'll say it again. Is the quality that allows someone to continue doing something or try to do something even though it is difficult or opposed by other people. You face opposition. You're going to face opposition. But you're going to say, no. I will keep on what? Keeping up. There is no retreat, no surrender. Proverbs Chapter 24, verse 16. You can write it down as your reference on that uh, word. For, for a just man, what? You see, the just man falleth seven times. The righteous man falls, what, seven times? Yet he will rise up again. <laughs> that is persistent. Huh? Proverbs 24, verse 16. He said, the righteous man falls seven times, he will rise again. Right? You may fall. Yeah. It's not the end of the story. You don't give up after one trial. You don't give up because you prayed and nothing happened today. You don't give up because you asked God to do this and he didn't do it today. That doesn't make you a headliner. That doesn't qualify you to be a participant in the divine nature of God. It is the persistent person that makes it true. In second reference that you can find that I'll get for that, that you can check later today, is Luke chapter 11 from verse 5 to 10. Jesus gave a story about a man who went to knock on the door of his friend, midnight, right? Because he was looking for bread. And the story went this way. This was Jesus speaking. And he said, the friend would not open the door. But because it, the, in verse, uh, verse 8, Verse 8 of Luke chapter 11 says what? He said, even though the friend did not want to leave his bed or get up that early, uh, midnight hour to come out, but because of the other neighbor's persistence, 
<laughs> because he persisted. Right? He said, I say unto you, though he will not rise and give him, but because his friend, yet because of his importunity, he will rise and give him as many as he needed. Because of his persistency. Do you just give up after one trial? Then you may not be able to see what we're talking about us here. Number two, perseverance. Those who persist know how to persevere. To persevere simply means continued effort to do or achieve something despite difficulty, failure, or opposition. Right? You see the difference between persistence and perseverance? Despite difficulty and failure, you keep failing, and everybody's laughing at you, but you don't just give up. <laughs> you don't just stop. Everybody's calling you names. When will you stop this nonsense? When will you stop? When will you change and do something else? But you know, deep down in your heart, you know what the promise is concerning that. You know what God has told you. you uh, it, it may not make sense to people. God said, I'm going to save that child. And it's been five years, you've not heard from him. And they keep hearing stories about that child is away somewhere, doing all kinds of stuff. And you know the promises of God over that child when you gave birth to that child. You know what God told you. And you kept believing and keep praying and keep telling people. And when, you're, when that child calls, you keep prophesying the promises of God over his or her life. And the child even laugh at you and say, oh, mom, why didn't you stop that nonsense? When are you going to stop this? But you know, despite failure, the next minute you hear, oh, he's in prison. He's been locked up. Oh, he's got this. But you don't stop. Despite failure and difficulty, you persevere. Because what? You want to what? Participate. You want to become a headliner. You want to become a newsmaker. Amen. James chapter 1 verse 12. That is the reference there. It says, Blessed is the man that endured temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to them that love him. So those who endure to the end, Perseverance also means the quality that allows someone to continue trying to do something even though it is difficult. Galatians chapter 6 verse 9 is the second reference. He said, let us not be weary of well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Right? And so when a man perseveres, he will live to what? That means you, can, you have the ability for prolongment. You know, you can endure long, right? To prolong is to make something last or to continue for a long time without giving up. Second Chronicle chapter 15 verse 7 said, Be ye strong, therefore, and let not your hands be weak, for your work shall be rewarded. Don't let your hand be weak. Keep on keeping on, keep on plowing, keep on digging. Because there is a reward for your effort. It's not over until it's over. This is what God is calling you and me to this year. In Romans chapter 4, verse 17 and 18, you know the story of Abraham. The Bible says, even though he was good as dead, right? As it is written, I have made the father of many nations before him whom he believed. Even God who quickened the dead and colored those things which be not as though they were. Who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken. Alright? He prolonged. He suffered long. Against hope he believed. Never gave up. And this is what brings the victory that we're looking for. And finally, this morning, the fourth and the fifth foundation, I believe, that will make us participate in the divine nature of God is to have that sense of profound men. To, to profound, having a great knowledge or understanding or having an intellectual depth and insight. And because this is what the Bible says in Second Peter chapter 1, he said, according to the knowledge of him, 
right? Knowledge, having depth of the word of God, having knowing God. Jeremiah 9, chapter 9, verse 23 said, Let not the wise man boast in his wisdom, nor the strong man in his strength. Let him that boast, boast in one thing, that he knows and understand. That he knows and understand God. That he knows God. That profound knowledge of God. This is what Jesus said, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Do you have that? In the book of Proverbs, it said, let, it said, it said wisdom is the principal thing, but in all you're getting what? Get understanding. Get understanding. Get understanding. We need to walk in that depth of knowledge. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9 and 10, finally this morning, he said what? No eyes have seen, no ears have heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man. Right? Proverbs chapter 4, verse 7 said, wisdom is the principal thing. Right? But in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9 and 10, as we pray this morning and go, he said, Lord, not... As it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither has it entered into the heart of men, the thing which God has prepared for them that love him. But God has revealed them unto us by what? His spirit. For the spirit searcheth all things, yea, even the deep things of God. The deep things of God that will bring you freedom, that will set you apart this year, as a newsmaker, as a headliner, it is by the Spirit of God. It's that profound knowledge, that wisdom that the world does not know, that wisdom of God that is foolishness to men. It is in that place that your grace and the glory that God has promised us, the promises of God, becomes a reality for you and for me. And with all this, this will be impossible without what? Prayers. Finally, the fifth is prayer. We must be men and women of prayer this year like never before. Don't wait for somebody else to pray for you. Learn to pray for yourself. People are so busy these days, amen. Uh, you know what I mean? There are a lot of people you say, can you pray and they say they are praying, is when you call, they will remember, oh, because they have so much in their own mind, that unless those who have, been, who have the gift of intercession, that remembers to pray for you. Many people, you know, the funny thing about the world today is that when disaster happens, and you hear it all on social media, on the news, our prayers are with you. I don't know what prayer they're talking about. Amen. People that don't even know what. <laughs> <laughs> Our prayers, just the, the, the fact that you said, my prayer is with you does not mean you pray. <laughs> you know, it's just more just like a social jargon that comes out of people's mouth. I let it give him, oh, our prayers are with you. So, did you really pray for me? Shall we stand up this morning as we get ready to go? So you think about God What is prayer? Prayer is the exercise of faith and hope. Prayer is the privilege of touching the heart of the Father through the Son of God, Jesus Christ our Lord. Prayer is the practice of the presence of God. It is a place where pride is abandoned and hope is lifted high. Prayer is a place of admitting our need and adopting humility and claiming dependence on God. Prayer is the needful practice of every Christian. So Jesus taught us in Luke chapter 18. He said, men ought to always pray and not faint. Luke chapter 18 verse 1. Men ought to always pray and not faint. That means you cannot give up now. You've come too far. You survived 10 years of all those trials and tribulations. Now you are 2017. 
You are here for such a time as this. If you did not die last year, if you did not, if the enemy did not defeat you last year, then this year becomes your year of turning things around. This is the year that you say enough is enough. I want to become full participant in the divine nature of God through the knowledge of him, through understanding. A house is built. This is the year that we need to begin to walk like we've never walked before with God. This is the year that God wants you and me to participate in the full divine nature of the Father. I don't know who wants that. I don't know who is tired and says, Lord, enough is enough. I want something different. Second Peter chapter 1 from verse 2 again. And to five, and we pray. I want you to look at this. This is the summary of everything I was saying, and this is what we read at the beginning. It said, Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, according as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of him, through the knowledge of him, Second Peter chapter 1, verse 3. Through the knowledge of him that had called us to glory. He's called us to glory. He has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light, I believe. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. That by these you might become what? Partakers. He gave you and me these promises for a reason. By this. So the Bible is not for me to decorate my shelf with. <laughs> Amen. Right. It's not for me to sing about. It's not for me to preach about, which is good. It's not enough to just preach about it. It's not enough to sing about it. It's enough to believe. The Bible says, your word have I hidden in my heart. He said, let this word of Christ dwell in you richly. He said his promises, he has given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. He said again, let's look at verse 4. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises this year. That by this, you and I will become what? Partakers of his divine nature. Having escaped the corruption that is in this world. You can become participant. You can walk in that divine nature of the Lord. God wants you and me to experience that. And the first thing to do is to acknowledge Jesus as your Lord and Savior. If you don't have that relationship, like I said at the beginning, having a mental knowledge of him is not enough. It's having a relationship with Jesus. It's coming into that oneness with him. As you confess your sin and confess my sins, say, Lord, the Bible says, if we say we have no sin, we we'll lie and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, it's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He said, behold, if any man be in Christ, behold, if that man or woman is a new creation, all things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Except a man or a woman be born again, he or she cannot see the kingdom of God. And he said that kingdom that the Bible talks about, the inheritance in the kingdom them. He said, the Bible says in uh, Ephesians chapter 2, he said, for he himself is our peace who has broken the dividing wall of hostility. So he has come to reconcile us back to the Father so that we can now begin to participate in that nature that brings glory, the glory of God, the virtue of God, the nature of God, that nature that is devoid of sickness, depression, anxiety, and worry. That nature that does not include sin and sickness and disease and stress. Yeah. I've never seen anywhere where they say Jesus was stressed. <laughs> Amen. I, I don't know. The Bible says as he is in heaven, so are we here. Yeah. Amen. It's possible. Yeah. The fact that I'm not walking in it does not make it not. It doesn't mean it's not true. Amen. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and so instead of me to sit down and become skeptic, and skeptical of other people who are walking in that grace, 
It is for me to begin to desire that. Amen. Amen. That I've not experienced it yet does not mean it's not happening. Or doesn't mean it cannot happen. Amen. And so if I read the Bible and I read the promises of God, how many of us believe that God is not a liar? Now think about it. How many of us really believe that this is the word of God? Yeah. How many of us believe that it's true? Yeah. Now let me ask a very stupid question. How many of us have this word working for us? 100%. Be careful now. <laughs> How many of us are really experiencing all the promises in this book, word here, in this book? No, I am not. I'm yet to experience them all. Amen. But I want to. Because it's possible. Because they are here. All the promises of God, the Bible says they are yes and amen. That I'm not walking in them does not mean it's not true. That I'm not walking in them does not mean I can't walk in them. <laughs> do you understand what I'm saying and so what I want to do this year for myself is Lord if it is here I want to believe it teach me to walk in it I'm going to believe unto death I'm going to persevere if I'm believing you for my healing I can't be crawling to bed but I will be saying thank you Jesus amen, amen. you know what I mean I will persevere and then I wake up tomorrow morning again and the pain is still there. That doesn't make it a lie. It just simply means it's not yet. Amen. Then I say, okay, it's a new day, a new hope against hope. The Bible says what? Abraham in hope. And so I need to create a new hope. Okay, this is a new day. I'm going to believe again. And I keep believing. Six o'clock, nothing has happened. Instead of getting better, I keep getting worse. And then the ambulance came. Right? <laughs> but I keep believing. And the siren is blowing, but under that siren, my voice is still saying, thank you, Jesus. I know your promises are true. And I believe that I'm healed. Even as they put all the needles through me, my hope is not in that needle. My hope is in your saving grace. Because many people have gone through the same process and they die. You see how it works? Perseverance. Believe until belief becomes the reality. Yeah. This is the year that we have become headliners. Amen. How many of us are with me on that? Yeah. We're just going to push it. We're going to push like a woman in labor. In spite, <laughs> amen. I've never been there. I've been in the room. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> I've been in the room when it's happening, but I didn't go through it. Amen. One little needle here, I'm screaming in the hospital. So, <laughs> thank God I'm a man. And then God bless all the mothers in the house. Amen. Yeah. But you push anyhow, right? And you're screaming, and they say, keep pushing. It's coming. Keep pushing. And it's like... <laughs> <laughs> And all hell is breaking loose here now. God, be, amen. <laughs> so we'll call you back. <laughs> all right, so, oh no, how do I stop that? <laughs> amen. <laughs> all right, so this is what it is. We are going to keep believing until that which God has promised us become a reality this year. And so we're going to receive strength this morning before we go in the name of Jesus. We're going to receive strength. We're going to believe God for hope. The Bible says, Abraham against hope in hope believed God. We're going to believe God for righteousness. We're going to believe God for holiness. We're going to believe God for healing. We're going to believe God for restoration. We're going to believe God for reconciliation. We're going to believe that that family member will come back. We're going to believe that that marriage will be healed. We're going to believe God that that sickness will give way to complete health. We're going to believe even whatever the doctor says. We're going to say our God is faithful. He will do it. I don't know when, I don't know how, but I know. When is it going to happen? I don't know. When is it going to happen? I don't know. But will it happen? Yes. And it is that knowing that gives you the courage to wake up every morning. Though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. 
Just begin to thank God this morning. Just begin to talk to God about your expectation. Begin to tell yourself, I'm not going to give up this year. I'm not going to accept defeat. No matter the pain, no matter the news, no matter the report, no matter what the enemy says about me, about, I'm not going to give up this year. I may accept it. I may have accepted defeat last year, but this year is going to be different. This year, I will not say, I will not accept no in any way, in any shape, in any form, in the name of Jesus. I'm going to say, God will be God in my life. I will participate in the divine nature of God. I would take my marriage from that place of obscurity into that place of God's glory and kingdom being reflected. That when my neighbors see through my window, they'll begin to see God's glory. When they see my children this year, they're going to see the glory of God. When they see me, they will see God in action. That when they call me a Christian this year, it will be because I am a Christian. Not because I came to church every Sunday. When men say you are a Christian this year, it is going to be because they saw Jesus show you. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Father, we give you praise. 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 Give you praise. Amen. Okay, I'm just going to pass it around. Just speak and then we'll take the communion together and we all go. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You just take it. Before I say, just take it in your hand, hold it, and still be praying and be telling God what your expectations are this year, what you're believing Him for, and you will not give up. You believe it that you will participate. You will see the glory of God in your life this year. You will see the power of God being released over you this year like never before. You will see God's grace. You will see God's power. You will see the mercy of God. You will see the anointing of the Holy Spirit upon your life. You will see God show up like never before. No matter what happened, you're going to say, no. No, I will not accept defeat. No, I will not accept failure. No, I will not accept defeat. In the name of Jesus. That through this communion, you will receive the power to persevere. Through this communion, you receive the power to persevere. Through this communion, we'll receive the power to persevere, the power to move on, the power to stay strong, the power to keep pulling ahead in the name of Jesus, the power to say no to failure, to defeat, to fear. Thank you, Jesus. For that, we give you praise. We worship you. We bless your name. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. We worship you. We praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Mm, good job. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Yeah, it is. You want to take a drink for her? Thank you, Jesus. If you don't want, you want to change that? Okay. <laughs> okay, take another one. Okay. Okay. I'm great. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. All right, Father God, we give you praise. Do we all have our communion there? Okay. Can we lift it up, everybody? Okay, can you take four? Sorry. One for her. And you, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Father God, we just give you praise. We lift up this cup. Oh Lord, as our first communion of the year, Lord, I pray for strength. The strength, O oh God, that only you can give. The strength that will bring healing and victory and freedom to us, your people. Father God, we sanctify this cup in our hand and the elements in our hand. Father God, we release strength to it. 
Father God, we thank you by faith, O oh God, to imbibe the nature of Jesus. Lord, you said this is your body broken for us. Heavenly Father God, you say we should do this always in remembrance of you. Hey, Father, as we take of this, may the nature of Christ, that indestructible nature, that nature that is exempted from trial, from sickness, from sorrow, from depression, oh God, may that nature be imbibed in us this year. May we begin to walk in the fullness of the glory of God. Father God will sanctify this communion and will receive it with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Take the body of Christ and the blood of Jesus shed for you. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you. Even as we go this morning, we pray for the anointing of exemption. This is all purely to you as we go. If you want to be anointed, the Bible says in Exodus, it says, when I see the blood, I will pass over. He said, touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. This year, as you step out, if you want, you just, we sanctify this oil for anointing. Father God, I pray, Lord, that every child, every family represented here will be exempted from every plague this year, will be exempted from defeat, from failure, from untimely death. When the angel of death and destruction begin to move around, minus them. Only with their eyes would they behold and see the punishment of the wicked. That none, O oh God, will be cut short prematurely in the name of Jesus. Their marriage is exempted from disaster, from divorce. Their children are exempted from drug addiction and evil communication in the name of Jesus. We declare, Father God, that through this anointing, we will be exempted from every plan and deceit of the devil this year and beyond in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. Father, we give you praise. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord go with you throughout this year. May every day of this year be filled with the glory of God in your home and in your life. May you be a man or a woman sought after. You shall make news this year, but not negative news. People will talk about you, but not negatively. You shall be a wonder to your generation and to your community because of today in the name of Jesus. May the Lord set you apart for a divine visitation this year in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Father, we give you praise. Father, we exalt your name. In Jesus' name, amen. And so